Collingwood in the latter half of the 20th century and early part of the 21st century evolved from the heyday of shipbuilding and launching into the recreational and tourism focus we're familiar with now. The closing of the shipyards in 1986 marked the end of an era. At its prime, the shipyards employed 1,000 people and built over 200 ships. This industry remains an important part of the town's history and identity, with new businesses and landmarks paying homage to it. Another significant chapter ended in the late 50s with the last passenger train running through town. Over the course of the next decade, the Northern Railway Line transitioned into a pedestrian trail known today as the Georgian Trail. Collingwood now has a robust trail network, over 60 kilometers long, with a variety of surfaces and features interwoven through town. Post-war, Collingwood was transitioning from an industrial town to a recreational one. Hockey was the primary sport for players and spectators, with the Collingwood Blues and shipbuilders packing the stands and taking home trophies and championships throughout the 70s and 80s. In addition to hockey, skating, swimming, football, and baseball were prominent activities that residents participated in. While Collingwood was known as a hockey town for some time, it also became synonymous with skiing, despite the fact that the slopes along the Niagara Escarpment are technically outside the borders of town. As the founder of Blue Mountain Resort, Joza Wider was a prominent pioneer in the ski industry. By the 1960s, skiing influenced much of the local economy and dominated the winter season, as it still does today. Towards the end of the century, the Elvis Festival would put Collingwood on the map for international visitors and would see the main street closed to cars in order to accommodate the crowds, stages, and vendors. This annual event ran for 25 years, starting in 1995, and grew to be the world's largest official Elvis Festival drawing visitors and tribute artists from around the world. Other prominent landmarks and buildings that were erected during this time include the station, AKA the home of the Collingwood Museum since 1965. The Carnegie Library, which was vandalized and burned down in 1963. A new smaller library opened on the same site at 2nd and Maple Streets in 1964. After outgrowing that location, a brand new library opened in 2008 at Simcoe and St. Marie Streets, while the original location was converted to residential units. The downtown streets underwent rejuvenation and beautification. No longer is here Ontario lined with wooden sidewalks and cobblestone streets, but the brick walkways, lighting, trees, sitting areas, and signage all have familiar notes of the past. Despite all the changes throughout its 160 year plus existence, Collingwood has maintained its charm, honored its historical roots, and preserved the stories that make the town what it is today. We're glad you're enjoying the Discover Collingwood app. And if you haven't yet, download it for free in the App Store on your mobile device. Discover even more of Collingwood's history and how it shaped its present day culture at all eight discovery hubs throughout town and via the app. Self-guided tours will deliver new information while taking you along old, well-worn paths.